Hi all, Andy here, and uh, welcome to part one of the Coin Pusher Rebuild. If you've not done so already, please check out the other videos on my channel. These detail the Coin Pusher to date, how I originally built it, and what I'm about to do. So part one is going to be the Coin Pusher front glass and access hatch. As we're going to be removing the access hatch, it will give me a chance to measure everything and then I can publish the dimensions on the channel. So upgrades for the hatch are going to be new thicker glass, better lighting and improved hatch ceiling around the edges. So without further ado, let's get it off and get it measured. So there's the hatch removed, time to give it a measure and then we can talk about some of the upgrades we're going to make to it. Okay, so measuring the hatch across, it's exactly 50 centimetres or 500 mil. You probably can't see this very well but the front edge of the axis hatch is bevelled so that it gives a flat finish to the front of the pusher. Put that back down because of that the back edge of the axis hatch and the front edge of the axis hatch is actually a different length the back of the axis hatch is 75 and a half centimeters so 755 millimeters the front edge of the axis hatch is 74 centimeters or 740 millimeters so there's a 15 millimeter difference between the back edge and the front edge. So bear that in mind when you're cutting the wood. So the thickness of the wood I've used for the axis hatch is actually 20 mil. So the beveled angle edge on the front of the axis hatch is just under 45 degrees. Internal opening of where the glass goes. Across 38 centimeters or 380 millimeters. Lengthways, it's 56 centimeters or 560 mil. So I'm going to put that in a diagram to show you. Repairs to the back. I'm going to put a new piece of glass in that's probably at least 10 millimeters wider on each side and longer top to bottom. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an edge all the way around the opening so that the piece of glass that we fit rather than screwed physically to the axis hat it's going to slide down some rails and make a much nicer finish so i'm also going to run led lights all around the frame on the inside technology's come on a long way since i built the pusher originally and now the LED lights you can actually change with the remote control so you can have different colours. I'm actually also going to power them off a USB socket so they can be unplugged much easier. So I'm going to fit a USB socket to the existing power supply. So all of those stages are to come. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the piece of perspex we need given the dimensions we've just taken and cut that to size. So the perspex has been cut to size. I've now positioned it where I need it on the back of the access hatch. So I'm going to draw around it with a Sharpie, marking out exactly where I want to keep it so I can remove that and then assemble the rails. So I've also cut the four pieces of perspex which are going to form the edge around the main glass. So these I'm going to glue to the back of the axis hatch. So once these are glued, I'm going to apply these wooden battens above to hold it all into place. So 
So the wooden battens I'm going to use to affix the main perspex in place, I'm going to drill very small pilot holes through the batten and through the perspex rails, being careful not to crack the perspex, and then put screws in to hold that all in place. Before I do, I'm going to put a little dab of glue on the back of the battens just to affix them to the back of the rails. As I'm fixing the wooden batten in place, please note I'm keeping it perfectly in line with the bottom edge of the access hatch. This way, the wooden batten will not be seen through the glass during play. So the glue is dry. The screws have gone in to hold the rails in place. So if we turn this over, we can now see it's all fully assembled. I'm gonna give this a quick coat of paint on the back. It won't affect play, but it'll make the back of the hatch look nice when it's open. So here's the old Perspex, as you can see. The old light strips are still attached to it. It's pretty flimsy, it's all cracked. And if we turn it to the side, that's the thickness of the old Perspex, and that's the thickness of the new Perspex, totally different. So if we compare the old piece of Perspex to the new glass, although it's a bit smeary, you can see it's a much superior product. So with the Perspex fixings fitted, it's time now to move on to the LED lights. I've bought a very simple kit. It comprises of the waterproof LED strips. Each LED is capable of doing multiple colours, which you can set using the handy remote control. So when we go across the access hatch, we want to put a corner in. So we simply, if you can see that silver part there, we can cut through that so using these corner pieces, we can actually turn a right angle with the lights. So we need three corners, and the lights will enter on one side. So these joining blocks are a much better and more efficient way of connecting all of the sections of LED strip lights. When I did this before, I had to literally cut away at the rubber coating and solder each connection together when I wanted to turn a corner. Not great. Fitting the LED strips into the corner pieces is fairly simple. You need to slot the four contacts under the four feet on the corner piece. So I'm going to use the end of a dart to actually slide it under easier. So once slid all the way in, snap the lid shut. And repeat the exercise on each joining strip. So the LED light strips and corners are now all assembled. I've got it set up on the worktop to give it a quick test. So here goes. Fab. Looks like all the LEDs are working. So time to get them stuck on to the axis hatch. So I've laid the lights out ready for sticking down to the frame. These LED strip lights are essentially self-adhesive. So it's a case of just removing the backing paper, pressing lightly down on the top of the light, and they should stick. Let's give it a go. At the moment, there's no USB socket on the pusher. And I think this video is gonna to become too long if I also include that in this content. So I'll put that into a separate video. So for now, I'm gonna run the LED strip lights from the mains on the USB lead. Let's give it a try. I'm going to quickly assemble that back onto the pusher, so let's see it working. So with the lights turned down, we can quite clearly see 
a light test of red, green, blue, yellow, and then a quick demo of it changing color. I don't think the video actually shows this up too well, but it's really quite effective. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. So that just about wraps up this video on the access hatch. So we have replaced the glass. We've also changed the LED lights and we've also improved the fit around the edge by fitting those wooden battens. So I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. Obviously the USB power supply, I haven't covered in this video. I think it's just gonna drag the video out far too much. So I will cover that in the replacement of the power supply and improving the wiring. So again, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, press that subscribe button for more content and thanks for watching. See you soon.